Okay, hi there, and uh, welcome to a Synoptic Paper 3 revision video. Uh, in this video, we'll look at a question asking students to think about the micro and macroeconomic impact of an increase in interest rates. So central banks around the world cut interest rates, as you know, 10 years ago in response to the financial crisis. Rates, in, rates of interest stayed very low, close to 0% in many advanced countries. In the UK, we've had a modest rise in interest rates, 0.75% in August 2018, whereas in the United States, interest rates have risen by more, by over 2%, actually, since December 2015. Here's the chart showing UK base interest rates. Of course, they've stayed at historically low levels, remarkably low levels for the last 10 years. Now, a synoptic question if monetary policy comes up, I might ask you to think about both the micro and macro effects of a change in monetary policy. And an essay question would require you to use both micro and macro. Remember the synoptic aspect, if you only focus on macroeconomics, for example, you'll only have access to around half the available marks. So here's a question, evaluate the likely micro and macro economic effects of a decision by the Bank of England to raise interest rates. Well, what can you talk about uh, in terms of knowledge of the full syllabus on the micro side? The obvious thing to do would be to think about the possible consequences on individual households at a micro level and individual businesses and markets and industries at a microeconomic level. So in terms of households, one effect could be higher costs of borrowing for, for some. But maybe their mortgage becomes more expensive. Uh, families with unsecured debt, perhaps with a high level of credit card or store card debt, would face an increase in their borrowing costs. On the other hand, savers, maybe, maybe retired households who depend on their savings, perhaps the rate of return on savings might improve and increase, giving them higher disposable income. Another micro aspect on households would be the possible impact on the housing market, perhaps uh, a slowdown in the rate of growth of, of prices, which could then impact on housing affordability, for example, for first-time buyers. Again, microeconomics, you're trying to narrow down the impact to particular groups, particular markets, particular sectors. Businesses would also be affected by a rise in interest rates. Uh, there would be a possible slowdown in, in sales, revenue and profits, especially for businesses where demand is interest elastic. In other words, where the demand on sales is sensitive to the rate of interest. I've hinted here that you should apply some examples at this point. Consider the market for new cars or consider the market for home improvements, for example. Uh, there will be an increase potentially in debt servicing costs. Now, for most businesses, interest on loans is a fixed cost. So you could use an analysis diagram to show that impact on operating profits. Consider, for example, the possible effect of, of a rise in interest rates on the exchange rate. Now, if, if other things are the same, uh, higher nominal interest rates would, could possibly cause the exchange rates to appreciate. And if sterling is stronger, that will have an impact on exporters and importers. Again, apply some examples. What's the implication for car manufacturing firms, for example, trying to sell cars overseas? What's the implication for the UK construction sector that might import a lot of its raw materials and components? Also bring in financial markets. That would be another aspect of micro. Think about the potential rise in the profitability of lending from commercial banks. They may have more incentive to lend, but equally an increased risk of bad debts adding to their losses, for example. On the macro side, you can't go wrong, as I've said before in previous videos, by going back to the big macro objectives of policy. Growth, inflation, jobs, trade, competitiveness, government finances. Just pick out some of those big macro aspects. So would, for example, a rise in interest rates have an effect on inflationary pressure? Would it slow down the growth of aggregate demand, perhaps closing a positive output gap? The impact on inflation through the appreciation of sterling, imports become cheaper. I'm sure you could use an ADS diagram to show that. In theory, higher interest rates uh, lowers the risk of inflation. But what about the consequences for growth? Uh, what, what about the impact of higher loan costs on planned investment by businesses? If the housing market slows down, what are there consequences for consumer confidence and the wealth effect? If export sectors get hit by a stronger pound, 
what are the consequences for output profits and jobs in those industries uh, is are higher interest rates good or bad for competitiveness will planned investment be affected how will uk exporters for example cope with a stronger exchange rate and if interest rates start to go up generally will that lead to increased cost of government borrowing for example in, in the uh, in the yield on 10-year bonds, if that goes up, does that increase government borrowing costs? So lots to consider here. Uh, again, you have to evaluate both the micro and macro effects. It's better to pick out one evaluation point and develop it more fully than, than a range of points. But on the micro side, no one household is affected in any in, in the same way by, by an increase in interest rates. Consider, for example, families with variable rate mortgages compared to those with a, a three to five year fixed rate loan. Consider families with savings who might be looking for higher interest rates concern, uh, compared with those with insecure debt with no savings and likely to benefit. The impact depends again on the extent to which the lenders, the big commercial banks, actually change their own interest rates. The impact depends on whether expectations of interest rates have changed. Do people think it's a temporary rise by the Bank of England or part of a long-term increase back towards three, four, or five percent. On the macro side, many factors affect the value of the exchange rate. It's not just interest rates. It can be the current account deficit. It can be interest rates in other countries, for example. Many factors affect the rate of inflation, commodity prices, competition in markets, not just the rate of interest. How many fact? What factors determine business investment? Is it business confidence? Is it the rate of change of technology? Is it the rate of growth of demand in export markets? Business investment may be interest inelastic, in other words, dependent on other factors. And of course, we've talked about changes in nominal interest rates, whereas most economists would argue that what matters is the change in the real interest rate. In other words, the nominal rate adjusted for inflation. That could be more important than just a change in nominal interest rates. Either way, here's a, here's a classic scenario a deflationary monetary policy, the central bank increasing interest rates, and in a synoptic paper, in a sort of open-ended response question, you do need to think about the micro and macroeconomic effects of this change. And hopefully this little video has given you a few ideas to think about.